guys, today I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what I look at when I'm evaluating a portfolio and determining, you know, is it appropriate? Is there anything we should do, uh, make it better, changes? What is it that I'm looking at um, when I'm going through this dissection of accounts and the portfolio in aggregate? So first, obviously, I take a look at the macro breakdown, stocks to bonds. You can see uh, for this hypothetical portfolio, it's not very large, about 80,000 into 70-30 mix. I want to take a look at the what's called the equity style box. This tells us um, the categories of small, mid, and large cap that make up the portfolio. You can see this is pretty well diversified, obviously um, expected to be the bulk in large cap, therefore we're using S&P 500 benchmark. I also want to take a look at a hypothetical return graph. You can see, uh, given this is a 70-30 portfolio, a hypothetical 10-year return of 11% is very uh, healthy. It's not overly... Uh, aggressive uh, does so that tells me there's probably not like a crazy concentration of tech or some other sectors that have real high return potential but obviously come with a lot of risk um, that's that seems to be pretty good for what I would expect just at first glance I'm also going to take a look at the sectors that make up your portfolio um, two that we always keep an eye on are real estate and technology because um, t they typically to be either are underweighted or overweighted. Um, it's just because of the way uh, a lot of holdings are out there, especially that are available in like 401ks and things where a bulk of our, us millennials hold our assets. Um, so, and for example, this portfolio, both real estate and technology are a little underweighted in my opinion. So we'd be looking at, at increasing that a touch um, for a little added diversification and return potential. I'm also going to take a look at the volatility and the uh, potential disparity we can expect but, uh, from a risk return uh, standpoint. So real quick, market beta of one. Beta or the, the market, the SP500 has a beta of one. That is a measure of volatility. If your portfolio has a beta of less than one, then you would expect your portfolio to be less volatile than the market. So in this case, this portfolio has a beta of 0.8. Given that it's a 70% stock, 30% bond, portfolio. Uh, I would expect the beta to be less than one. I would actually expect the beta to be about 0.7 given it's 70% in stocks. However, um, being at it's 0.8 tells me that there's some holdings in here, maybe like commodities or alternative investments, um, giving it a little added volatility. If your portfolio is greater than one, so say 1.2, then you would expect your portfolio to be more volatile than the market. We're also going to take a look at standard deviation. Standard deviation is just a measure of um, where the data set falls in relation to the mean. So in this case, a standard deviation of 15 um, tells me that this portfolio as is isn't uh, necessarily crazy unstable or volatile. That uh, standard deviation of, of 15 falls within one standard deviation of the mean. Um, and you can see that the benchmark, the S&P 500, has a standard deviation of eight. We would expect it to be a little more volatile, have a little more disparity because that's 100% stocks. This portfolio is a 70-30 split, so we expect the standard deviation to be a bit lower. I also want to take a look at your domestic versus international exposure. Uh, merging might be a little high. Typically in this environment, we're looking at about a 5% exposure, but that's nothing alarming. Probably would keep it as, it, as is. Given the low interest rate environment, we're looking at an effective duration. We want that to be kind of in the four to five range. So that's not terrible. Net expense ratio 0.47 is, is very good, but this tells me that there's probably some actively managed funds in here upping that expense ratio, um, meaning you're just paying more for those uh, underlying funds that you're holding. So we could drop that down a bit potentially with maybe some more passively managed funds, index funds, uh, even some ETFs, things like that. Uh, lastly, I'm also going to take a look at the uh, overall holdings of your portfolio. Like, are you overly concentrated in a fund or in a stock? Uh, in this case, we can see the 75% of this portfolio is in these top five funds. Uh, these five funds are primarily equities, which makes sense given this is a more equity weighted portfolio. And with the AOA, this is a diversified ETF, but 100% stock uh, at about 36% of overall assets. That's nothing alarming to me. I feel like that would be a good fit uh, just from taking a look at the portfolio uh, in isolation. Also, we want to look at individual stock positions. So you have a concentrated stock position if that if of that one company you hold about 10% or more. If that's the case, 
again, given, you know, we got to take into account other factors, but 10% or more would tell me we might want to look at a tax effective diversification strategy. Uh, particularly if you have equity compensation, then you're probably going to have a large portion of your portfolio in your company stock. Um, I, you know, it could be 20, 30, 40, 50%. So that would definitely, uh, give us cause to look at a diversification strategy, but this, you know, less than 10%, um, 2%, one and a half, you know, this, these are all, all, no, all fine, nothing alarming. And you can actually see that none of these hold, none of these companies are actually held individually. These funds or excuse me, these companies are just held within these various funds that this hypothetical portfolio holds. Um, and so you can see a lot of funds are buying the same companies just in different percentages, essentially depending on the uh, purpose of that company or of that fund. So uh, this is kind of a quick overview of how I dissect a portfolio. Obviously you want to take this into account along with uh, your uh, risk tolerance, your goals, your time horizon, all those other big things that help give us our, give our money a purpose and uh, can help us come up with a perfect portfolio for you.